After a revitalizing cup of tea, I hope you all are geared up for our next session. I, Anmol Meghanadan, student of MBA Hospital and Healthcare Management Program from Symbiosis Institute of Health Sciences on behalf of Symbiosis International University, welcome each one of you to our session on healthcare innovation and entrepreneurship. Innovation has become one of those buzzwords that connotes different things to different people. Newness, discovery, and perhaps an advance in technology. But no matter how, how it's defined, constant innovation has undoubtedly brought the science of medicine to dizzying new heights. We are all beneficiaries of an ever-improving healthcare system. To exemplify the topic of healthcare innovation and entrepreneurship, I would like to call upon our anchor for this session, Dr. Arvind Sinsure, Professor of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Symbiosis International University. I request, sir, to accompany our, uh, I request, sir, to please take over the dais. So good morning to all of you. I'm sure you had a great session in the morning. I think we are starting 10 minutes before, because as per the schedule, it is 11.45, we need to start. But the kind of a response that we see, I think, is a good to start early, because we can finish early. Otherwise, the whole plan was to complete this session at 2.15. But we can perhaps finish at 2 o'clock so that we can have a great lunch. We will not sit here being hungry. So I'm very, very happy to see the response and see the response from the youngsters. And that shows that innovation and entrepreneurship has caught up, and particularly innovation and entrepreneurship in healthcare has caught up in India. Though entrepreneurship in India has become a great buzz, it has gone beyond the buzz because today Indian entrepreneurship ecosystem is the third largest ecosystem in the world after US, UK, and then comes India. In fact, yesterday or today I was reading an article which says that India has managed to beat Israel when it comes to incubators and accelerators. I do not know how many incubators and accelerators that are being set up in India. But in this whole process, Symbiosis has pioneered innovation and entrepreneurship in India when it comes to the education. The very concept of symbiosis is a great example of an innovation, innovation in the education system. And then this is the institution which started India's first two-year full-time residential experiential MBA course on innovation and entrepreneurship. It's a very, very unique course. And the philosophy of this course is inspired experiential learning. And I see some of my students sitting here in the audience to listen to the panel. It was a year back when we started you know, discussing about the structure of this particular conference. This is a very unique conference in the healthcare. It's a unique because perhaps this is the first in India which has, which is covering various dimensions, very diverse aspects of healthcare. You must not have seen a conference where we are discussing about the legal aspect of healthcare, communication aspect of the healthcare, all the way to innovation and entrepreneurship aspect of the healthcare. I think this is truly, truly unique, multidisciplinary conference from Symbiosis in India. So a year back, when we were discussing about structuring this particular course, a uh, particular conference, we said that innovation and entrepreneurship has to be one of the tracks. There are only, I think, eight tracks for this conference and one of the tracks for this particular uh, conference. And when we were discussing about the track on innovation and entrepreneurship, we said that this particular session is going to be a session where we get to hear different perspectives, different experiences on innovation and entrepreneurship. And I'm happy to tell you that some of the speakers today who are going to address in this session come from a very different background and they are going to cover very different things about 
the healthcare innovation is not just about the technology. But why are we worrying? Why do we, uh, you know, worry about innovation and entrepreneurship in healthcare? The statistics are scary when we talk about Indian healthcare system. You will be surprised that there are one million deaths every year due to the lack of healthcare access in India. Is it not a shame for an India where we have some of the best talents in the from you know best talent in the world? In spite of, in spite of that talent, there are one million people die just because there is no access to the healthcare. There are 700 million people in India who does not have access to the specialty healthcare, and particularly in rural parts of India. Millions of people in India are driven to poverty just because of the healthcare. Because they, you know, my brother was a doctor, when I used to meet him, he used to say that any poor family, if someone in that family gets into the hospital, that whole family is, is on the road. Their whole family is, is, is destroyed. And you know, yesterday we were discussing that what is the cause of some of the farmers' death. In fact, some of the families in rural parts die, prefer to die because they commit a suicide because they cannot bear the cost of the healthcare. There are many other reasons also, but one of the causes of the deaths, and there are many, many disturbing statistics about Indian healthcare when it comes to the you know, contribution of GDP and many other things. But having said this dismissal situation about Indian healthcare system, but in India there are great examples the way healthcare is being delivered, is being innovated. If I look at this, just the pharma industry today, in 60s or 70s, most of the drugs used to be imported. Even to the extent of a drug like paracetamol, we used to get the API or formulations from abroad. And look at 2010, or around 2010, we were the exporters of pharma products or drugs. And today, India is the pharmacy of the world. 20% of the pharmacy is being exported to the rest of the world. And this is a great example. But Indian pharma industry did not stop there. There are great examples of Indian pharma industry who tried to invest in research and innovation. For example, Biocon has a great examples of coming out with a new formulation, new, comp new drugs for a cancer and many other things. Glenmark is a great example. A small R&D center based in Mumbai has the largest pipeline of a new drug, new molecules, whether it's a new chemical entities or new biological entities. But it is not just the pharma industry that is doing well, but when I look at other startups, like today we have Dr. Ajit Kamath, who is coming from Mitra Biotech, or say Shanta Biotech, and these are the ones who are trying to develop vaccines and many personalized medicines for, the, for, the, for India and, in, and, and, and rest of the world. And there are many startups today who are working on developing new solutions, whether it is medical diagnostics to all the way to the, to the new molecules and so on. Arvind Aikere became a great case study on what innovation can do for India, Indian people, and rest of the world. And today, every business school goes to Arvind Aikere to study their model. It's a unique innovation. LV Prasad Eye Institute is doing incredibly well. Naran Rudalia are doing amazingly new things in, in terms of innovation. So what we'll do today, the whole focus of this session is learn from different stakeholders of innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. So we were lucky, and they are hand-picked speakers. Let me tell you, hand-picked speakers, because we have such a great people and great examples from India we could have done you know, we could have got many, you know, different people, but we said we will have very, very unique people who are going to speak and share their experiences. The first is Dr. Ajit Kamath, and I know Dr. Ajit for almost, you know, a few years now. We have been discussing about many different issues and how we can, you know, help Indian healthcare industry. He has a great ex experience from Pfizer. He was in R&D in Pfizer in U.S. 
He came to India, built the partnership for Pfizer in, in India, and later, now, he's working in a Mitra Biotech. It's amazing, Ajit, you know, the way you are applying all the experience from a large company and then giving it back to a, a, a startup or a, has gone a little bit, you know, away or raised. The Mitra Biotech is not just today a, a startup but has gone beyond startup. You are trying to help. The next is we have Admiral V.K. Singh. Admiral V.K. Singh is a veteran in healthcare. He was a doctor in the defense, but today, Admiral V.K. Singh is helping to build healthcare ecosystem. He started his own advisory, you know, Curious, and now he runs a magazine called InnoHealth, runs a conference, and he's advising many young entrepreneurs, innovators, you know, to make new, um, uh, develop new solutions to the healthcare. And we want to hear from him. He, he's also a very influencer within the government. He's, he's part of a policy making and so on. We are so lucky to have Admiral V.K. Singh. Then we have Dr. Sham Vasudev Rao. You know, I, I have been associated with him for the last seven, eight years. I have a great, great respect and admiration for the work that he has done. He was the head of Philips R&D Center. And he said that he wanted to do something in the eye care, in ophthalmology, when he heard that there are 80% needless blind in India. And he says, what am I doing here? And then he left Philips R&D Center, start his own company called Forest Healthcare. And today, Forest Healthcare developed not first to India, but to the first to the world device, intelligent, portable device for ophthalmology screening and diagnostics. And today, it is one of the successful uh, venture which has come out from India. I think the valuation is $100 million, but of course, there are a lot of learnings that one can learn from Forest. But he did not stop. He has a mission. He has a mission that ophthalmology is not enough to take care of the healthcare in India. So now he's working on affordable dialysis machine and many other you know, innovative solutions. Then we have a young, young entrepreneur because I wanted to showcase that how young engineers are trying to develop innovative products and solutions. What we can learn from them? Can we get inspired by their, that young engineer could have joined a particular big company. In fact, he was working in a big company and would have had a great life, but he left that to start a new venture, which is called Sofomo, and he developed one of the most, there are several innovators who have developed ECG machine, but his ECG machine is very, very different, which is implemented on the ground, and it's a making a difference to the people. Here is uh, uh, Mr. Gautam More. We said we can learn from his experience what it takes to build a innovative product and a solution in India. Then we said we need to bring in somebody from a global experience who can tell us what innovation can happen in the education, in the medical education. And we are very, very fortunate, Dr. Shiralkar, coming all the way from UK. Of course, he has an association with Pune, but still he managed to come, and we are very, very thankful. He's going to tell us, and he's going to bring the global perspective on innovation in the medical healthcare. I think we have phenomenal, I, I think it's a, in, in a, uh, speakers, but perhaps it's the only session where you can get all these people in one particular platform to learn, engage, and get inspired to make a difference at the end of the uh, day. So um, now, the way session is structured, the briefly the session is that we will have 20 minutes of presentation from each, but before I get into the presentation, the sharing the structure, I said, why we stop only listening from those who are the practitioners of the medical healthcare, but learn how to get the funding? Where are the different ways to get the grants? Where we can, help, where we can seek the help from a mentoring expertise and how foundations are going to help? So we have Dr. Shishandu. Dr. Shishandu has been a known figure because he was working in a Welcome Trust and then after Welcome Trust, now he works for a Bayrak. So the whole session is going to end. The whole speaking session is going to end with Dr. Shishindu talking about various possibilities to get the grant and then take that, your idea, into an entire commercial product. So we are lucky to have a Dr. Shishindu in the, into the panel. So we will have speaker, speakers, six speakers, 20 minutes each, and we will end this, the, the presentation 
uh, with Dr. Shishindu, and later we will have a Q&A. We will have a panel discussion. In fact, I have lots and lots of questions to ask and get the clarity about healthcare in India. So depending upon the time, we will definitely have a, not only the Q&A, but kind of a panel discussion. So are we all ready to start a session? Fantastic, great. So I will invite Dr. Ajit Kamat, a veteran in healthcare, to chair this particular part of the session. Dr. Ajit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Arvind, for fantastic introduction to this particular session. For many of us who are in drug discovery, we have seen you know, various aspects of health, uh, healthcare. I mean, I went to one of the sessions this morning on IT. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling. You know, it's fantastic sessions looking at various opportunities for innovation within IT aspects, okay? And when you're talking about healthcare, there are lots of areas where you know, we can contribute and without entrepreneurship, nothing will move. It's a question of, you know, some pe pockets of people thinking differently than the mainstream, like Pfizer and others, saying that, okay, this is the way, you know, we can look at it, we can make a difference, let's form a team, let's do it together, and then, you know, try to see how it can be implemented for the, uh, for the benefit of the patients. Because all of us are working for uh, improving the healthcare and make sure that, you know, patients are well taken care of. Uh, and uh, Professor Arvind did a fantastic job introducing uh, all the speakers that they sa saves us a lot of time. So, you know, for, from my part, uh, I'll talk about one particular area which has been very, very close to all of us. We'll get into some details there. Uh, we have about 20 minutes, so if somebody can remind me in, in 18 minutes, I'll try to finish it in 20 minutes. Okay, so the title that uh, I chose, uh, Professor Arvind had told me almost a year ago that you know, we'll arrange a conference like this and please you know, come and participate and see how we can energize the youngsters and bring everybody together to improve the healthcare system in India. So the topic that I've chosen is innovation in personalized uh, medicine for cancer. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, the, the, the talk I have briefly put into two or three different buckets. We'll talk about the introduction to drug discovery, one or two slides, talk about the personalized medicine. We covered quite a bit in, in the IT session. That tells you, you know, how personal we have become. I mean, it's, it's getting into various areas within healthcare so that, you know, we give individual attention, individual treatment for the patients instead of saying one drug should work on everybody. And then we'll talk about the future. Future, you are the future. And, you know, how things are going to go, um, you know, in the future. Uh, taking the healthcare forward. This is one of the slides I use all the time. Uh, Professor Arvind uh, would have seen this many, many times. And this is a reality, okay? I'm, I've been in pharma industry for you know, 24 years, and this is the truth of, you know, the, the, the attrition in the pharmaceutical industry, and you start appreciating, you know, how dedicated people have to, to, to come up with a new drug. If you start with, I, I put an example here, one of the sc most scariest, uh, you know, uh, pipeline that you have, if you have about 100 drug discovery programs, okay, and you work on it for about 15 years, you, st you end up with one or two products, okay? When we say, you know, 100 programs, each program will have about 20 to 50 people working on it over a period of 15 years, okay? So there's no guarantee that, you know, you work for 15 years, you'll have one drug coming to the market. This is a very scary picture because we start from idea, you know, do some discovery, and then every stage, you have a lot of loss, okay? So now, you know, you spend 15 years, 20 years, at the end of it, you have one or two products. Fantastic, you feel, you know, elated that you are contributing to the society, okay? Let's see what happens. Look at this slide. Um, I was in one of the talks uh, uh, Dr. Francis Collins was talking about. You know, he was telling how all pharma companies are talking about coming up with drug discovery, telling the difficulties of spending billions of dollars and, you know, many years of work, but the drug that we are coming up with, you know, are not effective. It just tells you how complex people are, okay? How complex drug discovery process is in order to make it very effective for each patient, okay? In this particular case, uh, since I'm concentrating on cancer, I just put, you know, cancer drugs, 75% of the time, they're not effective, okay? You see this slide and then go to the previous slide, you, send, you, you suddenly wonder, what are you doing, you know? You say you spend so many years and come up with the drug, the drug is effective only on 25% of the patients who are very much looking forward to the drug, okay? 
and this is the, this is the reality, okay? That's where innovation comes into the picture and say, okay, you know, there is some messages here. We have some drugs that are working, but they're not working. How can we get into personalized medicine? How can we make sure that, you know, we treat individuals as individuals instead of saying one drug should work on everybody? We'll, we'll get into that in, in a few minutes. So that's where the concept of, you know, personalized medicine came into the picture. And in this particular case, I don't know if people in the back uh, can see it, okay? If you look at colon cancer, you know, there are so many patients uh, with colon cancer. If you have one therapy, you may not be able to see at the bottom, you know, some people, beautiful, it works very well. In others, uh, absolutely no effect, and others, it is toxic. Remember, these are all, you know, quite toxic drugs, okay? If this is the case, what's the point of, you know, saying that we have medicine, one drug fits all, there's a title, it, it is no, no more real, no more true. Whereas if you can identify some biomarkers, okay, to say that, let's say we have the same patients, if you do carry out some studies on them, looking at their urine, looking at the blood, looking at the DNA, or whatever the biomarkers is, and then categorize them into different buckets, as you see in the middle, okay, now you treat them with different drugs, as you can see it there, so that, you know, at the end of it, everybody benefits. This is the goal for personalized medicine, and that's the major talk of what I'm going to, uh, major theme of my presentation, okay? So, to do this, there are two, multiple ways of doing it. One, one platform that's very much alive here and, and uh, you know, prospering is genomics platform. Again, we, I'm talking about cancer, you know, uh, I say I have lung cancer, I go to the doctor, the doctor says, okay, Ajit, you have lung cancer now, okay, I'm going to do some tests, take some biopsy and see what mutations are there so that I can come up with some medicines. So you can do a 48 gene panel, 140 gene panel, 340 targets, trying to identify what's wrong with my gene so that the doctor can identify the best drug for me. And these are, I give some examples here, uh, you know, Stand Lab Sciences, MedGenome, that are positive and, you know, uh, MapMyGenome and everybody else providing this kind of service, but also you can use other services right here in India, okay? So a lot of companies are doing this work, okay? So the, though they can tell you that there are many mutations there, but there are something known as actionable mutations, non-actionable mutations. In this particular case, you know, you, you put them into a bucket where, you know, there is some drug that I go to the doctor, the doctor may say, Ajit, yeah, you know, I, you know, I did all the mutations on you and there is one particular mutation, you have a drug, good for you, so I'm going to prescribe that. But then what happens if there are no drugs for such mutations? We call it as non-actionable mutations, okay? So, so essentially, you are not able to make much progress there at all. These are some of the, you know, uh, mutations and the new drugs that have been approved, okay? So what has happened in, in general is that when people are taking at genomics as an approach, overall, it, the expectations have been very high. It's a fantastic te technology. It's a technology that's going to help a lot of people, but, you know, the expectations have been, uh, the outcome has been below expectation because each of us are different. Okay, you cannot just do some mutation studies and say, okay, I'll give you this particular medicine. That's where people have come up with various methods to, to see how we can individualize the treatment. Okay. I have a few slides to tell you here how, how, how many drugs are available. I mean, this is, a, this is one slide uh, I took from Google. There are more than 40 drugs for lung cancer. So if you go to the doctor and say, I have lung cancer, how would, would he or she decide which is the best drug for me? Okay or which is the best drug for the next patient. So, so the concept here that uh, Mitra and others have come up with is doing innovative phenotypic screen, okay? Each of us are different, each of us have different DNA, different proteins, different metaboli metabolism, metabolites, microbiome, everything. So is there any way you can individualize the treatment, taking samples from each patient, treating it in the lab, and then saying how it's going to work? So people's tumors have been tested. These are all the technologies that are, you know, vastly helped our knowledge in this particular area, using patient tumor cells or growing the tumor in the lab as organoids and then testing them with various drug combinations or, you know, growing the patient tumor in animals, treating the anim uh, in mice in this case, treating the mice with various drugs and then coming back to me and saying, Ajit, you know, I grew your tumor in, this, in various mice and this is the drug that cured the mice, so I'm going to give you. Th these are all the examples that are there, okay? 
but the technology that, that um, Mitra Biotech, uh, Professor Erwin talked about, you know, is something unique. What we are trying to do is create the microenvironment, how the tumor is there in my body, and it is different than somebody else, the, different than somebody else. It's individualizing the treatment so that we identify the best drug for my current condition. Okay? So if you take a tumor of a patient, it's not just the tumor cells. Okay? You have lots of other components, whether it's tumor cells, you have stroma, you have blood vessels, you have growth factors and everything else. If you take just the tumor cell and study, it is, it is not mimicking or rather replicating what happens in, in, in my body. Okay? So the, the technology that we are trying to do, uh, going beyond this one, is trying to mimic exactly what is in, the, in, in my body with regard to the uh, ligands, with regard to uh, vasculature, with regard to the matrix and everything else, so that you are mimicking what, uh, what happens in, in, in my body. That's the technology we have. Uh, so this is, if uh, the patient is there, we go and collect, uh, actually the doctor gives us some biopsy samples or, or uh, you know, uh, surgical excisions, and then we try to grow it in the lab. Um, you will see some, some of the characteristics that we do with the, uh, with the matrix proteins. We have autologous ligands, all the growth factors and all are from the same patient. Uh, and then the vasculature and everything. So we are trying to mimic very, a condition very, very close to what is in the patient's body. Okay. Now, we have to validate it, but we rely uh, significantly on algorithm development for clinical outcome. So you take the patient tumor and then you know, try with various drugs, carry out 10 to 15 different parameters, various studies, and then come up with some, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a multifunctional uh, kinetic parameters, and then you know, come up with uh, some outcome. Meanwhile, you take the same, and then you know, this is the patient treated with various drugs. Some drugs will respond, some drugs will don't respond, some drugs will not respond. Okay? And then you take all this information, go through, we collaborate in the Indian Institute of Science, use, um, develop some algorithm to see, develop an M score. If the M score is 25 and above, that means the tumor indeed is responding. If it is less than that, that means the tumor is not responding. This is a fantastic kind of information for the doctor, and we do this within, uh, within seven days. Okay? That is, that is a, uh, you know beauty of this technology. I wanted to give you a couple of examples here. Okay? So in this particular case, where the M-score was more than 25, you can see the treatment, uh, patient uh, before the treatment, M-score was 45. After treatment, it looked very good. Okay? Uh, and then you know, the, the positive prediction is more than 90%. I think. And then if uh, M-score is very low, you know, it, uh, the, the, in this particular case, it was, M score was 18, and the patient is not going to respond. In this particular case, we know for sure the patient will not respond. So the beauty of this is that you are able to tell the doctor, you know, even before the treatment starts, that you know, if you have a list of eight or nine drugs, we can try it in the lab, come back to you. In that way, you will be able to eliminate the ones that are not going to work and use the one uh, uh, that are definitely going to work. Okay. I want to give you. A uh, couple of examples there. Okay. Um, one particular uh, case study that we have, I think the colors have changed, uh, or maybe I'm not able to see it properly. You know, that, uh, the doctor tried, uh, asked us to try with eight different drug combinations, and the scores are given there. And you know, some of them are responding extremely well. And, uh, you know, but th the doctor can decide depending on the toxicity of the, uh, of the drugs, depending on the age of the drugs, and how the patient have been treated in the past. Okay, so all these components are bringing together instead of saying, you know, this pill will work on lung, this pill will work on colon cancer. I mean, we are individualizing everybody's uh, treatment. And then, uh, you know, if you see at the bottom the PET scan before treatment and after treatment, after six cycles of treatment, you see significant improvement in the tumor reduction. Okay, this is the kind of technology that are going on here, right in India, okay, and this is just the beginning. Okay, that's where, you know, Professor Arvin is telling us as to how we need to work together, various aspects of, of healthcare to make sure that you know, we aim for better way of handling diseases, handling you know, patients, and making sure that we alleviate the sufferings of the people. Okay. Uh, this is another example. If you look at colorectal cancer, okay, these are standard treatments. Uh, you know, there are, if you, in this particular case, you know, there are 22% of the people who will respond to these two drugs. These are standard drugs. Okay, 
21% don't respond at all, and 57% can respond either. How will you know, right? You may go with one, the pa patient may not respond unless you do this test right at the beginning. And this is one way that we are giving information back to the doctor so that he or she can make informed decisions on taking things uh, forward, okay? Uh, and so from, from my point of view, I think it's a fantastic technology developed here in India. It's a proprietary technology which is going to help you know, help the patients, help the doctor. Uh, you know, when you go, when you say cancer, you know, there's always a fear how things are going to go. You do all these tests right at the beginning. The chances of the patient survival is good. Their cost reduction is extremely good because you don't want to spend your money on treatment that's not going to work. And then the toxicity, most importantly. So th we are using this particular platform uh, here in India and then also trying it in other countries to see that you know, the technology that we developed here in India is helping people in other, other, other countries, okay? But that's just the beginning. It's one of the technologies. There are plenty of technologies that are going on here, right here in India. You may have heard about a liquid biopsy. Think about, uh, you know, brain cancer. We, we get samples, uh, you know, from, from uh, people with uh, brain cancer. You have to take things out, okay? How would you do it every time you want to test it, right? Is there any way you can take that blood sample urine sample, saliva sample, and say, yes, you know, I see some tumor there in your brain. I see all the markers there. Those technologies are, are right here in India. It's, it's ongoing, okay? Look at uh, circulating tumor cells. If I have tumor of my, you know, of my um, liver, okay, there will be some cells coming to the blood. Can I have a test that is so sensitive it picks up those tumors, okay? So I don't have to go for any biopsy or surgery or anything. Just, you know, go to the doctor. He will run some tests and say, yeah, you know, I see some markers there coming into your, uh, into your bloodstream, so I'm putting you on this particular treatment from tomorrow, okay? So that's how things have been, and that's how we have improved, you know, our life expectancy has gone from 48 years to 68, 69, which is tremendous. And it's all because of, you know, innovation coming and contributing and saying, okay, you know, this has been the case, we have to improve in various aspects, and, you know, whether it's drug discovery, drug delivery, drug... D drug delivery or, you know, any aspects of it, okay? And I think we have done tremendous progress, but the future is very, very bright. I just wanted to show you this as a, as a last slide, okay? Uh, since this is, you know, a lot of people from MBA and other things, I want you to, if you have a chance, I think that it just went down there. It's a, a, a technology developed by a company called Bind Therapeutics. L look at this when you get a chance, if at all that website is there, okay? Because it's, a, it's one company that said, you know, if you are coming up with a drug, you know, how can you make it very, very specific, okay? You want the drug only to go to the cancer cells, nowhere else. Then you are killing the cancer cell, no toxicity. Look, this slide is from their website when it was there, okay? So it, uh, initially, when, when we thought about cancer, you say, we want that person to be alive, doesn't matter if it is toxic. So it started with a very toxic molecule, okay? Then, you know, technology is improved, innovative, Everybody became innovative. He said, yeah, no, no, it has to go only to the liver. No, nowhere else. It has to go to the liver. So you come up with, you know, uh, tissue targeting. And then you say, no, 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 wait a minute. The liver has a lot of other things to do. Can you make it sure that it goes only to the cell that's cancerous? Focus on targeting. Now you get into the cell, you say, wait a minute, don't go into that cell. I want you to go to that particular protein. Can you target it to that particular protein? Tyrosine kinases, you know, molecular targeting. Okay, so it won't go anywhere, only to that cell, that particular protein, it binds and it kills. This is the kind of technology that, that bind therapeutics and others have developed, but you know, that is fantastic science. Okay, it has to be a business. In this particular case, uh, you know, I think business was not good, so it, they went bankrupt and it became part of uh, Pfizer. Okay, so just wanted to end with the last slide. Okay, personalized treatment will transform the way that we discover drug medicines. Since I mentioned that, you know, I've been in drug discovery for years, we won't look at this, you know, the drug discovery process has evolved and we are not looking at drug discovery the same way as what it was when we discovered the Lipitor. Everybody will say, oh, come up with a billion dollar drug and you are safe for next 10 years. No, not anymore. You aim for $250 million drugs for, that will ha help lots and lots of people so that overall revenue will be high. You know, how we discover the drugs is important, how we treat the disease, individualizing people. This is the future. This is how it's going to go. Having said that, the second bullet is equally important, making this diagnostic test robust and affordable 
is the key to make it more personal drugs. So with that, uh, I stop my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Since, since uh, we have Q&A later on, uh, um, it's my pleasure to invite uh, Admiral V.K. Singh to talk about uh, innovation in healthcare. Uh, looking forward to your talk, sir. Question is at yes, Qu question is at the panel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll ensure I'll finish in 20 minutes allocated to me. Some of the people I see here in uniform might have heard my expanded version day for yesterday where I spoke in AFNC auditorium on same topic, but for one hour plus. So I'll just sensitize what healthcare innovation, transformation, etc. Now I have always been thinking that we are very poor in basics. And that is why, because I was a teacher and I was a founder director of IHMR Delhi, I asked the student after two years, what is the, you're teaching, you're learning hospital management. What is the definition of hospital? Mind you, 90% my student could not say. So I started grilling that from day one. Management definition they still could manage to tell. What is the definition of health as per WHO? Similarly, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when I talk to people, buzzword innovation definition is not known to many. So knowing that there are some students and not only stalwarts, so I have just used three slides, which is for basic parameters. Well, I still remember my olden days of medical college, I'm passed from AFMC, postgraduate AFMC. There are always two aspects we join together in life science, human being, animals, and they produce some results. Similar innovation, one another aspect is, health is one aspect which I can tell the pain of the patient and the doctor. And another is technologists like him who can translate and what patient is looking for that output and not what technology people are using it. So when I was a medical student in 63, I joined FNC. In 66, another buzzword came family planning. So when the family planning came, the dean decided, like the dean here decided something like this to do. He said, let's have something on family planning. Let's have one student, so I was picked up as a student, and one senior teacher. We spoke. Teacher had three daughters, he trying for a boy, never happened. And I was yet to get married anyway. And in the end, Dean said, there are two eminent speakers talking of family planning. One doesn't know what family is, another doesn't know what planning is. <laughs> so now I know a little bit of innovation, don't worry, health innovation. But I want to start with some simple definitions. This buzzword, one day I was listening to on TV. And Sushma Swarajji said, we know what is innovation in diplomacy. I was highly impressed. He said, Prime Minister has a breakfast in Afghanistan, lunch in Pakistan, dinner in India. This is innovation in diplomacy. Same word after 15 days, Rajnaji has repeated. I wouldn't have quoted you this because I have heard it myself on TV. So this is what Chayawala to everyone saying innovation. What is this buzzword of innovation? We'll talk in three slides. The innovation is something, oh, you changed my slide colors also. I never thought you changed the color when you come to symbiosis. I never knew that. Thank you, so nice. It is Yogi's color. I'm from UP, so it's very familiar, good color. Thank you. Yeah, yeah? Okay. Now to introduce innovations in our Vedic area is very much known. I've quoted in my book published in 2015 in US. Second one I've just submitted. Aribata in 3,006 years, 600 years back has brought a word called shunya. Zero. 
And that was the first innovation which is quoted, and I've quoted references on that. That means in translate into zero infection rate, never happens. Zero multi-queuing in the hospital. Meditation, zero. And when you add zero on the right side, it becomes a fully care of billions. Something like that is really very innovative on something. So on this note you find, innovation is not something much which is not known to us. It is only we are exploring it much better in a better way. Now these are just quick definition, I'll just take you. Improvisation, you can read it, I 